Okay. Now, uh, looking back, what would you say was the biggest mistake uh, that the band made that caused that that second CD to fall so hard? Oh well, um, I do know that the record was was put out at a time that a lot of people in the industry. Um, told us that we should not release the record at this time because of some, of, of some industry slumps was one thing. So we should have held off for you know another six months to 12 months to release the record. And in my personal opinion, I know that the first single that we released off that record, uh, the song was called Invincible. And it was more of a, um, it was less of a rock song. It was more of a, a poppy kind of song, and people were used to to heavy crossfade, and I think uh, that kind of turned some turned some people off and turned the radio off a little bit, and so they slowly just you know kind of stopped playing that song and just kept playing the old songs, and so we wound up leaving Columbia, and so it was a good thing in all because we have a, a fantastic product that we're really proud of, and we're happy to be with Eleven Seven. But um, I definitely think the timing of the release of the record and the choice of that first single um, were probably the two biggest mistakes. Okay. Now, uh, I hope you don't mind me getting a little personal, but uh, it was reported uh, quite heavily that uh, after after the departure from Columbia Records that you personally fell into a little bit of a depression. Uh, do you think that that is part of what colored uh, this new album? Oh, definitely so, man. I am. Um... You know, coming off of basically three years of of touring and writing and 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 just always busy, go go go, and success, and and then finally coming home and having a record that pretty much just lost attention from from the label and from from radio. Um, even though the record did fairly well, but um, coming home after three years um, and then just kind of having to deal with those emotions and just I just kind of fell into a to a slump where I didn't feel like writing I just I had to decompress I had to get my life back together because I wasn't, wasn't going to be on the road all the time so it just took me it took me a year just to, to get out of out of, out of a funk and um, Les and Mitch um, certainly helped me get out of that because I I was usually the main writer, and so um, the fact that Les and Mitch, you know, were there writing and doing stuff, um, and then I slowly got back into it because of uh, the things that I was hearing. So, just that whole decompression thing, man. After three years and and then having nothing to do, um, just didn't feel like writing, didn't feel, feel like doing much at all. So, that's about it, man. Okay. Now, uh, Killing Me Inside uh, was released online uh, almost a year ago, uh, but it was released as a single uh, April 5th of this year, uh, and uh, it did peak at 34 uh, on the U.S. charts. So uh, what's the next single, and uh, do, do you think you have a chance of maybe you know going just even a little bit higher than that, that 34th uh, position on the charts? Um. I do actually. The next single is probably going to be a song called "Dear Cocaine." Um, it's uh, it's kind of like a, a letter that uh, we've written to to Cocaine about friends of ours that have been through the drug and the, the lives that it's torn through. And um, that's a very moving song, and I think a lot of people will be able to identify with it. Um, it's a, a little more of a ballad, but it, it's also heavy at the end. But um, I really think that's going to catch people's attention, and people are really going to like that song. Um, and I personally think that it will do um, probably a little a little better than Killing Me Inside. Okay. Now, uh, you guys previously have had uh, kind of a, a more um, uh, kind of a uh, – how can I say it? Pop rock, uh, more mainstream rock uh, following. But with this album, you know, darker sound, uh, definitely darker artwork. Uh, do you think when when those uh, older fans see this really dark artwork, do you think that they're they're going to be turned off by that, or are you kind of going for a whole new fan base with this uh, reinvention and and uh, basically a whole new outlook on this band and and old fans uh, left by the wayside? Well, no, actually, because you know the first record was pretty, you know, um, 
content was was very sad and dark, as well as this record. The, the second record was a, a, a you know a lot more poppy. So I really think that the um, the, the fans what they know and love about Crossfade was mainly that first record that was dark and um so just the fact that this one's uh, you know a little a little darker I, I think that the, the fans are actually going to like it more because the um you know it is a little the content is a little sadder and a little more um kind of heart-wrenching and that's what the first record was all about so I really think the fans are gonna are gonna dig it um probably a lot more than the first one Okay. Now, uh, how does the songwriting process for this band go, or how did it go for this album specifically? Uh, did one person bring in a finished song, or did you guys all jam it out in the garage together? Um, well, no, you know, we record on Pro Tools, so most of it is, you know, either Les or I coming up with, you know, uh, riffs and licks and ideas and putting together a song, Um and then you know, halfway through the song, starting to get the lyrics and um, and the, uh, the melodies together, and, and just slowly piecing the song together. And sometimes, you know, a song would be half finished and sit there for six months, and then we'd come back to it. But um, one of the things that we always noticed about every each song on this album, once we finished the song, each song was our new favorite song. And um, I mean, I guess maybe that's typical of all the ends, but. Um, we were just so excited at the end of each song, and then then we move on to the next one. Um, but um, no, we didn't. Um, we we're not the kind of band that really records like all at once. You know, put the you know the whole band all together. So we just um, you know we record some drums, play some guitars over that, do some synth over that, and do some singing, and come back to it. And you know, sometimes I would come up with an idea, sometimes less, uh, sometimes Mitch. So it's just. Uh, a very collaborative process that just uh, takes a little more time than, than just banging it out the whole band at once. Okay. Uh, now, uh, one thing that we we do with uh, basically any artist that is not uh, has not reached legendary status. Obviously, if we get uh, you know one of the guys from Slayer or Judas Priest, you know we we don't give them this. But uh, any any newer artist uh, that we get, we like to give them what we call the RockMyMonkey.com pop quiz. Uh, are you ready? <laughs> I think so. All right. The band Guar is from what planet? Oh, my goodness, man. I, I've been to see them twice. They used to be one of my favorite bands. But um, um, I don't know the answer to that one. Uh, I mean, so, obviously, obviously Earth, but... Um, well, <laughs> you know, re really... The, 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 planet, the, yeah, right, right. Uh, Scumdogia. <laughs> so, uh, nope, didn't didn't know that one. What religion is Tom Araya of Slayer? Oh, wow. Um, agnostic? <laughs> he is actually Catholic. Oh, really? Yeah. Who would, who would have thought that? <laughs> yeah, well, that's why it's a question. <laughs> now, uh, uh, Lemmy from Motorhead is 49% motherfucker and 51%... Uh I'll give you a hint. It's uh, the subtitle of his new movie. Wow, I'm just sucking at this pop quiz. Um, um, 51 percent motherfucker and uh, 49 percent. No, 49 percent motherfucker and 51 percent. Oh, 51 percent. Uh, I don't know. Rock God. Son of a bitch. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> Who'd win in a wrestling match? Lemmy or God? Oh, I'd definitely say uh, say God. Uh, actually, it's a trick question. Lemmy is God, and uh, you got to watch the movie Airheads. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, who'd win? A, uh, 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 Lamb of God used to be called Burn the... House Down? <laughs> uh, burn the Priest. Oh, wow. <laughs> Uh, all right. Uh, who invented the metal horns, and which relative of his inspired it? Maybe uh, Ronnie James Dio. Yep. And um, I would not know the uh, the second part of that. Uh, actually, it was his uh, it was his grandmother, 
uh, and uh, that's why it's called the Malik. Is uh, it's actually uh, something from uh, from their culture, and it's actually basically equivalent to it's where the term giving somebody the evil eye comes from. And uh, if you do it the metal horns and you raise them up, uh, it's actually considered protecting somebody from evil. Oh wow! I got you. Cool. Yeah. Uh, Trans Siberian Orchestra came from what old school metal band? Oh. Striper? No. no. <laughs> um, wow, man, these are tough questions. I have no clue. Uh, sabotage. Oh, wow, yeah. Yeah, uh, and that's S S A V A sabotage, not sabotage. So some people okay. have actually misheard that. Uh, name three people who have fronted Black Sabbath. Three people who have fronted Black Sabbath. Um, you mean as in lead singers? Yes. Well, definitely Ozzy Osbourne. Yep. Um, man, I'm really sucking at this quiz because I have no clue who the other two are. <laughs> uh, think about think about some of my previous questions. <laughs> um, That'll give Ronnie you Ronnie James Dio. There we go. There's okay. Now you got two. All right. Um, wow, I know it can't be Kerry King. <laughs> nope. got me, man. Uh, there has been three others. Uh, Ian Gillian, Glenn Hughes, Tony Martin, and there's also a live album uh, with uh, Rob Halford of Judas Priest singing. Oh, yeah. I remember that one. Yeah. All right. Name three singers from Anthrax. Oh, man. I know Scott Ian was in there. He wasn't the singer. I think he was the guitarist, oh, wasn't he? Guitar player, yep. And Johnny Tempesta was the drummer. Um, you got me on that one too, man. <laughs> uh, Joey Belladonna. Is, oh, yeah. That's the classic lineup. Uh, John Bush, who replaced uh, – that, that's the, basically the era where they were on a major label uh, uh, or actually on Elektra. They were all, you know, um, as opposed to Atlantic. And then uh, Neil Turbin was the original uh, vocalist who was only on the one album. And then Dan Nelson actually uh, was the uh, singer that was there for like a year or so, but never recorded. He was supposed to record the new album, but they fired him before it got released. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, he was actually with the band for like a year and a half, but never recorded an album, never released an album with them. Wow, well, uh, that's a lot of a lot of singers to go through. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, uh, they've been around for a few decades. So, uh, yeah. uh, we're, we're almost done here. Uh, we got two more questions left. Name three guitarists that have backed up Ozzy's solo career. Um, Randy Rhodes, Zach Wild, and that's all I got. Okay, there's also uh, Brad Gillis, Jakey mm-hmm. Lee, who had Jakey Lee, yep. to them, uh, Joe Holmes. Uh, kind of the underrated uh, Aussie guitar player, the new guy Gus G, and believe it or not, Jerry Cantrell from Alice in Chains. I had no clue on that one, man. That must have been a while back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, it was actually like during the high. I believe it was during the hiatus uh, between when Alice in Chains broke up and and when they you know reformed. Okay. Uh, all right. The final question. These the number of the questions I've asked you as well as Spinal Tap's guitarist, has his amps go to what number? Uh, 11. Yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> See, now, if people get that one wrong, I have to ask them to, to you know, just stop playing. You, know, you can't – everybody's got to know that question. So. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> um, all right, cool. Well, I thank you very much for your time today. And uh, do you have any final words for the fans of CrossFade or the listeners of the RockMyMonkey.com podcast? Yeah, just uh, look out for We All Bleed coming June 21st, and uh, hope you dig it. I hope you like it, and uh, wish all you listeners the best, and hope to see you guys out there on the road very soon. And thank you so much for having us on. All right. Well, I hope to see you playing live in western Washington soon, hopefully at my favorite Seattle Dive, Studio 7. You got it, man. Thanks so much, Mark. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.